Welcome back. In this video, we're going to be taking a break from the theory and creating a, another mini challenge, which is going to be a simple higher or lower game. And it's basically going to consist of a computer generated random number between one and 10. And then we need to guess if the number that the computer is generated is higher or lower than five. So we're going to create a simple web page with a couple of buttons on, which is higher or lower. And then we need to create a display, which shows if the guess is correct or not. So most of the things that you need for this challenge has already been covered in this section. The only thing that we haven't looked at yet is on-click events. And that is basically when a user clicks on the button on the web page, and that triggers a function or an event and this function will contain the code which compares our guess with the computer's generated number. So if you'd like to give that a go yourself, feel free to do that. Or I'm going to get started and start with the HTML and show you the on-click events. So if you prefer, you can follow along with me up until then and then give the JavaScript a go at the end. Or follow along with me right to the very end if you prefer. So let's get started with its own folder in the control flow and loop section. We can duplicate the last video. And this is number six. So higher, lower game. Then open it up in your text editor. And then change the title. Higher or lower game. And we don't need the switch statement from the last video. So just delete that and get back to a basic HTML index page. So I'm going to start by creating the web page or the user interface. So I'm going to start it with a div. And I'm going to give this a class of well. And this is a bootstrap class which will make the whole of the div that we're working on. It will make it stand out with a background color. And also, I'm going to use the class of text center. And this will pull all the text into the middle of the page. So I'm just going to put some instructions on the page to start with. So a title first, higher or lower. And then a level two heading, which is the instructions on how to play. So is my number five or less or higher than five? Okay, so then some p tags below and this is just going to show the range. So the range for the random number is one to 10. And then below that we need a empty div. So I'm just going to put a level three heading in there. So initially there'll be no content in between these tags because we're going to put that in using the JavaScript. And this will be where the text is displayed to say if you won or lost. So let's give that an ID. So we can target that with the JavaScript later. So I'm gonna call mine text field. So let's just take a look at that and see how it's looking. Okay, so we've got the name and the instructions. So now we need to create a couple of buttons below, one with higher and one with lower. So let's put that in a input. So the input type is button. And let's add some bootstrap classes to that just to make it look a little nicer. So btn and btn info. And that's gonna create a nice blue button for us the value. So the value that we need, this is going to be the text, which appears inside the button. So let's put this one as higher. And then we mentioned at the start of this video that we we're going to take a look at on click events. And we'll look at these in a little more detail later on in this course. But for now, we just need to know if we add the attribute of on click, then we can pass it in the name of a function. And when this button is pressed, 
it then triggers the function. So let's put the function name, although we haven't created the function yet, we can still put it in. And then because it's a function, put the curly brackets afterwards, just in the same way as we would normally call or invoke a function. And we'll create that function soon. So that's the higher button. So copy and paste or duplicate that input. And then we'll make the lower button and change the function this time to lower. And then let's take a look. Great, so there's our higher and lower buttons. So just the last thing I want to put in for the user interface is a third button, which is just a play again button. So after each guess, we can press play again and the page will be reloaded. And I'll put this in its own div so it appears below. So the div, and uh, we'll also give this the class of well, and text center, just like this div above. And then a input with a type of button, and then some bootstrap classes of btn, btn info, the value is play again. And then the on click, the on click event, and then we'll call this one reset with the brackets afterwards. So let's refresh the browser and take a look. Okay, so that's looking better now. So now we've got to the stage where the HTML or the user interface is complete. Okay, so if you'd like to give that a go and finish it off yourself, feel free to do that. All you need to do is create a random number and then create some functions which are triggered every time these buttons are pressed and then to check against the randomly generated number. So give that a go, if not, just follow along with me. Okay, so let's go back over to the text editor. I'm gonna start working between the script tags because we just need to do the JavaScript now. So to begin with, we'll get the randomly generated number. So we'll put that inside a variable called computer guess and this is going to be a math dot random so if you remember from a couple of videos ago math dot random generates a random number between 0 and 1 so because we want 1 to 10 let's multiply this value by 10 and then we need to round that number up so let's change the computer guess now to be equal to math.seal. So this will round it up and then pass inside the brackets the variable that we want to round up, which is computer guess. Okay, so now let's just print this to the console and check that it's all working correctly with a console log and then put inside the computer guess and hopefully we should get a random number between one and 10. So go into the developer tools. And there we go. So we've got the value of seven inside the console and then refresh and there's a four, a nine, nine, nine again, and a one, a two. Okay, so that seems to be working okay. So let's just get rid of the developer tools and we can move on. So we can remove the console log now, we don't need that. So inside the HTML, we created the onClick events. And I'm gonna start with the higher function because we've called the function, but we haven't declared it yet. So back between the script tags. So hopefully you can remember how to create the function. So use the function keyword then the function name with the brackets. So what do we want this function to do? Well, we want it to check if the computer's guess is higher than five. So let's create an if statement in there. So if the computer's guess is greater than five. So now we want to display a message. So if you remember, we created a empty 
h3 tag with an id of text field so we can use javascript to grab this empty div or empty heading and then insert some text into there so document dot get element by id and the id that we want is text field And then we want to use the inner HTML. So we'll select inner HTML. I'm going to set that to be equal to you win. So if the user clicks higher and the guess is greater than five, the user wins. So else, let's just copy this document dot get element by ID. So else, and then the curly braces. So if the guess is lower than five, or five itself. We can then grab the text field heading and this time print the text, you lose. There we go, so we created the higher function and now we need to create the function if the lower button is pressed. And because this is going to be fairly similar, we can copy the function that we just created and then we'll change this to lower and this time, if the computer's guess is lower than or equal to five, then the user wins. If not, the user loses and the message will be displayed. So now we've got the functionality if the guess is higher or lower. So now we just need to work with the reset button just to clear the screen or to refresh the screen every time the user wants to play again. So this is gonna be a simple function but it's something we've not quite looked at yet in this course. So function reset, and then to reload the web page, we grab the window dot location dot reload, and then the brackets afterwards. And every time this reset button is pressed, the web page will be refreshed with this line of code. So let's save it and take a look and refresh the browser. So let's start with higher, so you win. Play again, lower, you lose. And let's try this a few more times. So you lose, you win, you win, you lose. So that seems to be working okay. Okay, so that's the basic functionality all working for the game. If you'd like to take it that little bit further, when the user's guess is incorrect and you lose, you can maybe put some text in there, which displays the random number generated by the computer, just so you can check what that was. But for now, I'm just gonna leave this game there. And thank you, I hope you managed to do at least some of that yourself. And join me in the next video where we'll take a look at loops and how they're used in JavaScript.